Welcome to Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. In today's video, I'm going to be making an aluminum trash bin for a houseboat. Not very big. It's about 34 inches tall, 21 inches wide, and about 13 inches deep. And it's going to have a removable lid for the top of it. Now this is going to be a fun little project. I haven't done aluminum in a long time and this is going to give us a great opportunity to work with the HTP Pro Pulse 300 for the aluminum MIG and the all new HTP Invertig 313 HCDC machine for the aluminum TIG. I can't wait to do this project. I haven't worked with aluminum in a long time. Let's get started on today's project. All right, so we're gonna start out with a piece of uh, four foot by five foot by quarter inch thick aluminum plate. Now, this is some material that was left over from this client that I'm doing this job for from something I did from him a while back, about a year ago. It was that uh, aluminum boat mass, you might remember. Uh, anyways, he said, hang on to this. We're gonna use it again. And so here we are. So this is what he had in mind is the trash bin. Now I needed six pieces out of this and I did everything I could to get all the pieces I needed but I just couldn't quite do it. I still needed uh, a small little piece so I picked a small piece up after the fact. But I was able to use just about everything I possibly could out of this. I didn't have a lot of waste. Alright so I'm going to be using the Evolution uh, skill saw with a cutoff or I should say with a uh, metal cutting blade on here. If you guys don't have one of these, you do a lot of fabricating, you do a lot of sheet metal work or, or aluminum work like this, man, this is the way to go. I'm telling you, there's a lot of cutting going on here, and uh, this thing just cut through there just like cutting wood. Now, it leaves a, put a straight edge on there, and it leaves a pretty nice uh, edge, pretty straight cut. Now, I'm trying to keep everything nice and straight for, for the welding purposes and everything as clean as I can. You know, one thing about it, it, it I tell you, <clears throat> there is a downfall. Uh, so you do a lot of cutting like this, and one thing it does leave is it leaves chips all over the place. And uh, that that is the only downfall, and it is a little noisy. You definitely should be wearing some ear protection when you do this. But uh, you know what? All the cutting, all of it got done in a short period of time, and uh, there wasn't a whole lot left. I think I had uh, two or three pieces left about this size right here, basically four inches by about 12 inches. There's all the chips left over. All right, so I'm just taking a file right here and I'm cleaning off, uh, deburring everything. You know, I'm using a file because I am gonna be doing all this aluminum welding and uh, I didn't wanna use a flap disc uh, or any type of grinding wheel because I didn't want to leave any kind of contaminants on the edge You know they say if you leave those sometimes you just don't get a clean a clean weld So I just thought I'd use the file to deburr everything all the edges are nice and straight and sharp anyway So they'll uh, be coming together All right, so once I got all that done it's uh, time for some assembly and this is the part you just don't know how things are going to go. I just have a plan in my head, and I just hope that uh, my plan works. So I'm starting out by, uh, you know, clamping the base down and then clamping one side up. And I'm using, uh, <clears throat> for the bottom is just going to be a flush joint, but the uh, all the sides are going to be outside corner joints. All right, got the Propulse 300 here fired up. And this is going to take some adjustment for sure. Um, I've got it set on the aluminum mode. This is 4043 and I've got it set at 300 and about 350 inches a minute and about 20.8 volts We're gonna see how that's gonna work. One thing if you do aluminum MIG is um, You keep your CFH really up there. This is about 60 now you definitely go through the argon especially on a project like this But uh, it sure makes for a nice smooth job You know, I can't say enough about these uh, Fab block squares. This is uh, this is something I got from uh, WeldTables.com. Uh, it was all part of a kit that I obtained. It had all different types of squares and clamps, and, and man, for fabricating, this is really uh, this is really a good way to go, especially on something like this. You know, those 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 squares are about 80, 18 inches uh, tall, and uh, you can see it worked out really good for what I'm doing here. All right, so I'm just tacking everything together right now. That's the key is to get everything nice and square and nice and flat. You know, during this whole process, I was, uh, you know, making adjustments. Uh, you know, like I say, I started out about 350 inches a minute, and that worked pretty good for the inside corner joints. 
for the outside corner joints. I had to make a couple adjustments. I uh, kept uh, turning it down, so I started, then I turned it down to about 300, and it was okay. But ultimately, when I got started on the uh, on the on all the all the welding, uh, it was down at about 250 inches a minute, and I found out that, that worked uh, that worked out the best. So I almost got this thing complete. You know, it's pretty important when you're doing something like this, especially when you're going to get to welding. When it all comes together, everything has got to be nice and square. You want all those corners to be uh, lining up just right, so everything is going to look good when you're done. All right, the last corner right here before I start this massive. Uh, um, welding fest. The bottom here, you can see that um, this is just a, it's a it's it's flush to the bottom. Uh, the sides and the bottom are flush, and then I'm just uh, putting you know some welds on there to get those nice and flush. Those are going to be ground down flat. You know, so far so good. You know, aluminum MIG can be a little finicky at times, boy, I tell you. But uh, here we go. I've made my adjustments, and I'm off and running. This is vertical up, and again, I don't do this all the time. Uh, so it takes a little bit, you know, if you did it all the time, maybe it would be uh, really easy, but uh, for someone that doesn't do it all the time, it's, it takes a little bit of adjustment. And I had a total of uh, just under 20 feet of welding uh, right here on this particular project. And it, uh, can you imagine, uh, you know, TIG welding this whole thing for you guys out there that do that all the time, probably no problem. You know, probably it uh, would be pretty quick. But, uh, you know, this is just like welding, just like MIG welding steel. The beauty of it is it's, it has its place. Uh, so something, a project like this right here, where it sits on your welding table, because this, this has a uh, eight foot gun lead and you can't really go much farther than uh, the welding table. So for something like this, that works good for that. If you had something that required a longer reach, maybe you're doing boats or trailers or something like that, that might require a, like a push pull gun or a spool gun of some sort. but. Uh, this is a 26 series torch, eight foot, eight foot lead, and for what I'm using it for right here, it's uh, working out pretty good. Not to mention, it throws out some pretty cool sparks, the 4th of July stuff here. But, uh, kind of fun to work with. That's kind of what it looks like right there. You know, not perfect, but not too bad. Got to remember, all those welds are going to get ground down a little bit later on. All right, so with the box complete, it's time to uh, start working on the lid right here. Now this is some uh, two inch by quarter inch flat bar stock, and that's what I'm gonna be using for the outside. You know, Champion is a new uh, sponsor to the channel right here, and uh, I'm operating with their new cutoff wheel right here, and I gotta tell you, uh, this thing is razor blade sharp, and I've got a lot of cuts through it so far, and it's still, still performing really well. All right, so I know I talked about using uh, the 313 here. Um, I've, I kind of changed things up a little bit. Uh, that was my plan from the beginning. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the aluminum MIG for the whole outside. But I am going to use the 221 right here for tack welding everything in place. It's my air-cooled torch. And I'm just using, uh, just using some like one-inch tacks all the way around. This is kind of finicky. I wanted everything to be just right. Uh, with uh, with the lid right here, as you can see, there's a lot of clamping going on, and I just want to be sure everything is nice and square, and uh, so that's what I'm using this for. As soon as we get this all uh, tacked in, all of all the uh, outside lid pieces uh, tacked in, uh, we'll be back with the uh, Propulse 300 and aluminum MIG. You can see all the fixturing going on right here. <laughs> You know, it's just all about keeping everything square, you know, and it, things start moving around a little bit when you start welding small pieces together like this. And, uh, you know, yeah, it's just, uh, I just want to keep everything nice and square and nice and flat. All right, so far so good. Everything is uh, the way I was hoping it would be. And I'm down to the last couple tacks right here. And I'm just going to catch these corners while I got the torch rolling. All right, and here we go. You know, I just flew through this right here. I know this is uh, sped up a little bit, uh, but you know, it goes fairly quick. And uh, you know, especially on in, in the flat position right here. You know, the gun angle is, is important, I noticed. This is about a 10, maybe 10 or 15 degree uh, push in the puddle here. And I noticed the stick out worked well right at about five eighths or three quarters of an inch, somewhere right in there, um, you know. Of course, you figure all this stuff out when you're at the very end of the project. 
but that seems to uh, that seemed to work the best for me. All right, this is the last little stretch right here, and the lid is complete. All right, so now it's time to start grinding everything down and uh, radiusing these uh, corners a little bit. So I'm starting off with a brand new 36 grit trimmable flap discs. Uh, this is a Mercer product, and I'm just coating everything with some beeswax now. Beeswax works really good for aluminum. Uh, if you've never used it and you tried to work with flap discs with aluminum, uh, you might find out they gum up really quick. But you put that beeswax on there and it uh, it works uh, it works amazing. It doesn't gum up. That it stays really sharp. I did this whole project, the lid, the box, and everything with one wheel. Um, I am going to switch over here in a little bit to a 120 grit wheel uh, for some fine fine or fine buffing and and polishing. But this 36 grit right here, it worked well. Just keep applying that beeswax. Pretty inexpensive. I got the beeswax on Amazon. It comes in bars. I got it in a you know six pack of bars type of deal, and uh, pretty inexpensive and works really good. All right. So with that done, I'm gonna just grab a uh, ceramic 120 grit flap disc here. You know all my abrasives uh, come from Mercer uh, flap disc cutoff wheels. Uh, non-woven pads, all of that stuff. They got some pretty good products. I'm really happy with all of it, and uh, you know, they work really good. You can see this 120 grit right here. It just buffed up the edges. It's hard to see right here. The aluminum <laughs> doesn't, you know, it's so bright that uh, it's just really hard to see the finished product. But uh, the 36 grit was roughed in, and that's 120 uh, grit came in, polished it off really nice. And when that's all done, uh, I just come back with a non-woven pad and just kind of hit everything and it just gives it that extra smooth polishing. You know, this is gonna get sandblasted, uh, primed and powder coated. So I'm not too worried about any of the scratches that may be on it. All that's gonna get covered. But, uh, this non-woven pad right here uh, does a real good, really good job just smooth, smoothing off any of the sharp edges that might, be, that might be left over. All right, so one thing left is that's to get the handle put on the lid right here. And this is a piece of three quarter inch uh, aluminum round bar stock. And so I was trying to figure out the, the right length right there. And I think I, uh, I think I come up with about seven inches is a good length proportionally wise uh, on the handle. I think that's gonna look the best. And then for the, uh, for the uprights uh, square cut right here, about two and a half inches long is what I decided to go with. All right, here's an interesting little thing right here. <clears throat> fab table, fab fab squares, fab <laughs> fixture clamps, all of it. This puts me to the test of everything that I had. <clears throat> Spent a lot of time getting this, this little piece locked into position. You know, you don't want anything to move around. I even made a custom wedge right there. Got some finger clamps. I got a lot going on right there to hold everything in place just for a couple tack welds, uh, initial tack welds right there. Quite a quite a fixturing feat, uh, you might say. It took me <laughs> took me 30 minutes to figure out how to put it all together, and it only took a couple of tacks, and then take it all down. But it kept everything nice and square, nice and straight. And now we're just going to go ahead and just finish it up. You know, at first I thought I was going <clears> to <throat> just go ahead and and tig the tig weld this all the way around and do a clean job and just leave the leave those welds just the way they were. Uh, but I decided, uh, of course, after it's all done, to take it over to the Burr King and clean everything up and sand everything down and round it all off. You never figure these things out until you're going, you're going, you know, you get into the project and you're, and you're almost done with it. And of course, your plans change all the time. At least mine do. All right, this is my third hand right here. These things are pretty handy to have. Um, I make these things out of all different types types of things. This is I made three or four of this uh, these here a couple of years ago. And uh, they come in handy just for these type of uh, uh, projects. Of course, you got to be comfortable. So block yourself up. Everything's blocked up. At least for me, I can't. I'm not that steady, so I got to try to do everything I can to stay as steady as I can. And that's what I'm saying over here to the Burke King. And once I started uh, smoothing things out, I decided, ah, well, I think I'm going to keep going. Ah, well, I may as well just round everything off. All right, it's starting to look pretty good. All right, I'll just keep going. So I'm saying, you know, your plans change as you, as you build things. At least they do for me. 
I'm over the vice and uh, rounding things off, smoothing things up, and I just couldn't stop. I just kept going with all the different sandpapers, all the different emery cloths, getting everything as smooth as I possibly could. The more I did it, the better it looked. All right, so I was I first originally was going to just weld it right to the top, and I thought, you know what? I don't know. This thing's kind of heavy. Maybe what I need to do is just drill some holes in it and kind of recess the handle down in there a little bit. So the first thing I did is found square in both directions. And then drew a little circle right here. And I got my hole saw and drilled, this, drilled a couple holes in here. Now you'd be thinking that aluminum, no problem, drill right through it. This is quarter inch thick aluminum, but uh, you know, it kept gumming up. But this, this stuff, I use this A9 aluminum lubricant. And uh, it works pretty good. It helps the cutting for sure. It still gums up a little bit, but uh, it uh, just like any kind of lubricant when you're drilling, uh, it makes things go a little bit smoother. All right, there's the handle. That fits in there. All right, time to get everything nice and smooth and flat and square. All right, so this, I can't do any kind of grinding or clean with this. So this weld is going to stay just the way it is. So I'm going to take my time and just work work my way around here and leave a, a you know a pretty nice a pretty nice weld at least uh, the best I can do anyway. You know some of you some of these welders out there they can probably go all work their way all the way around in one in one shot. But no, I I it took me four or five times moving things around to get around there. But ultimately, I was pleased with the way it turned out. And yeah, that's a, that's going to be a finished look there. All right, so there it is. It's all finished up. One last thing to do is to just get it on the back side right here. A combination of just filler metal and fusion all the way around. Some pretty thick stuff. And I don't think this handle is going to go anywhere. All right, there it is. It was a great project that uh, gave me a chance to hone my skills a little bit with the aluminum MIG. And the more I got into the project, the more I liked it. It turned out uh, turned out pretty good. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. We'll get this over to the powder coaters and get it cleaned up. Show you a finished look. Don't forget to check out my website at jimbosgarage.com. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next week. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.